Thanks so much for watching our show. We really appreciate the support. It costs a lot to produce, so we're asking for donations and pledges here on Patreon. Thanks again. Welcome back to See It and Feel It with Dr. Brett. Um, so was it more a dysthymia thing where you had a low-level depression that lasted, or did you actually go through a major depressive episode at 14, 15, where you were just like in a major funk? Um, I think it was a combination of, mm -hmm. of both, um, and then learned behavior, just growing, growing up around um, people who, who have trouble with depression and not seeing how to cope how to um, like reach for the low hanging fruit to kind of get out of it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the hard part is when, when people go through um, depressions, as we both know, um, a lot of people start to get more isolated, right? Because you don't mm -hmm. feel right, you feel off, and then relationships can get more difficult, mm -hmm. right? And if you're only 14 or 15, then that can get really tough because mm -hmm that you know that's when they film those movies like mean girls or something right mm -hmm. it's not like the most understanding period of time for yeah. adolescence yeah. so it i would imagine brutal. that probably yeah it can be brutal right we've all experienced that one as mm -hmm. well um what happened the second time though what how'd you how'd that one creep up on you or did it happen all of a sudden how that work um, this is super helpful because a lot of people go through this yeah yeah um so my second I guess experience with depression happened when like my road ran out, right? Because I went back to soccer right. and that was giving me purpose. It was giving me like a goal to strive for and right. then an injury. And then all of a sudden no, I can't show up anymore. Right. And then it's like, well, what do I do now? Because I'm not planning on going anywhere farther with soccer than this. And right. I'm graduating. Um, I still don't really know what exactly it is that I want to do. And I don't know what I, what gives me purpose now. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the real thing that swung me back. Yeah, totally. Um, so that's another like um, really important theme in depression is sometimes there's like uh, a feeling of sort of not just the hopelessness that happens once you're depressed, but there's this sort of lack of purpose or emptiness that mm -hmm. can be one of the triggers for the depression as well, right? Mm -hmm. Not having a sense of purpose. You know, it's weird because some kids, like, as you know, they want to be a doctor or a lawyer from when they're like five years old. Mm -hmm. And then there's some people that never find their sense of purpose. What would you say to that? Like, you know, how is it that you've sort of figured out your sense of purpose here? I know you're still sort of figuring mm -hmm. it out, but tell us more about that process of figuring it out. Okay. Um, so, okay. <laughs> I mean, okay, it, it's why not? a large Well, process. I'll answer that question. Why not? Um, for me, it happened through podcasts, through listening to how other people were able to kind of piece together their lives. Mm -hmm. But the main thing was just being open to learning about everything. Mm -hmm. And particularly like I couldn't exactly go and travel, but if, if you could go and travel, I would say go and travel. It was for sure. learning about yourself at the same time as being open to listening to how other people have learned about themselves mm -hmm. and also how they have built their built, I guess, um, built around their purpose mm -hmm. and how they were able to use different clues to identify that. Yeah. And when you say you couldn't travel, what I know now in the last year with COVID, mm -hmm. but are you, you it seemed like you were referring to something prior to COVID. When yeah. you say you couldn't travel, what was that? What do you um, mean by that? Just gotta check the premises real quick. Clear. <laughs> <laughs> you two down. Down. All right. We're we're back. Okay. We're back. We're talking about zebras in Africa. <laughs> um, no, anyway, <laughs> um, we're talking about purpose and depression and yeah. finding your path and mm -hmm. how you sort of arrived at that. Oh, yeah. And then why oh. I couldn't travel. Oh, and why you couldn't travel, too. Yeah. And we're talking about that. Um, I just I didn't have the money saved up. And Got it. I was going through, you know, like your awakening, your existential crisis when nothing is certain anymore and where everything you thought you knew isn't real anymore and you're like uh, oh i think i need to start over wow. and i think i need to like 
look at all of the things mm. I've been avoiding. Wow. So it was like, you, you can, you yeah. just need to stay here and deal with that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very cool. And some people travel to find that, mm. right? And some people like, like you said, they like stay and find it wherever they are, right? Mm. Ultimately, because, because when you travel a lot, what I've found is that, you know, you're out of your like cultural sort of like, you know, mores or whatever, mm. you're out of that sort of obligation around your conditioning that you have to be a certain way mm -hmm. when you're in a different culture so as long as you're respectful of their culture there's a freedom in that mm -hmm. and a lot of times that can be a trigger for growth as yeah. well right to get out of your mm -hmm. everyday conditioning sometimes yeah. it's harder to grow when you stay put because yeah. the you know role expectations can get really intense was that mm -hmm. an issue the role expectations for you yeah i mean yeah. i I stayed with my parents or anyone um, who is still with their parents after college. Hey, um, <laughs> and I'm not thing. sure she's recommending that. <laughs> and at times it can be wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was difficult because uh, there's a lot of triggers there. There's a right. lot of like, oh, you're becoming a, a new person or remembering who you are or however you want to phrase that. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, these people that have known you your whole life are like, what are you doing? Why are you mean you? your friends are judging you for staying at home? Is that what you mean? No, by like that? you're mostly my, I'm around my parents, right? So mm. it's like they have raised me to be a certain way, and now all of a sudden, oh, you're I'm changing. changing, and they're oh my like, gosh. what's happening? You know, like, mm, I don't yeah. know if I like this. Yeah. It's a little uncomfortable. So I often say, like, you know, because I've, I've worked with thousands of people, right? And I've coached mm -hmm. a lot of parents and stuff. And that transition into allowing your kid to become more of a friend mm -hmm. from a role, you know, um, there's a lot of moms. I'll, I'll just pick on moms for a moment versus dads <laughs> because it's like letting go of the mother role, right? Or the father role and allowing the friendship to develop. Yeah. As the kid transitions from adolescence into their 20s, mm -hmm. a lot of parents struggle to do that. And the more they sort of hold on to, you know, wear your hat when it's cold outside, right, the harder the relationship becomes, mm -hmm. right? Because kids want to grow up and evolve and, you know, become their own person. Mm -hmm. And a lot of parents can't escape the, you know, I meet, need my kid to be safe or to be this yeah. or to be that. And it sounds like you went through some of that. Yeah. Yeah, not fun. <laughs> It's part of it. Yeah, it's, it is part of it. But it's also harder when you stay, when you don't leave the environment, right? Like you yeah. said, if you can get out, sometimes that separation allows you the freedom to sort of yeah. come back in, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you, if you can do it on your own or live with roommates or whatever it is, it's definitely going to be a lot easier mm -hmm. because you have that space, that distance. Um, you also don't have to be taking on like, necessarily that family those familial energies and all of that mm -hmm. you know there's a um i just recently started working with um a mom of one of the um entrepreneurs that i coach mm -hmm. and there's a lot of separation issues that she's going through in her own family system in part because her son made a huge life transition that i helped him with mm -hmm. and so the metaphor that i was using is well i hit your you know now that like i hit your son in the face with a frying pan and he woke up and changed his world she got hit in the face with a frying yeah. pan because when he changed now she's looking at it and then the last person will be the dad to get hit in the face with mm -hmm. the frying pan because it's just that's how hard change can be for mm -hmm. some people, right? Mm -hmm. The 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 way to which a lot of people live their lives, it's like they stay in their habits and their comfort yeah, zones. Definitely. And so when the kid wants to escape that or grow and evolve, sometimes it's really hard to do unless you actually physically leave. Yeah. Right. And so mm -hmm. that's been this sort of struggle on your end, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then, so then you sort of figured out that life coaching might be a holistic, tell us about this, you know, transition into a class in or a course in life mm -hmm. coaching and so on. Holistic yeah. life coaching, right? Yeah. So, um, I, I didn't have anybody to kind of like help me through my own adjustment awakening process. Mm. Um, so I used podcasts and I did right. listen to listen to entrepreneurs. I listened to Oprah. I listened to shamans. Um, <laughs> Very open. Like, I like it. Everywhere. Yeah. Um, but I had been listening to life coaches for a while. And 
um, I was drawn to it, but I, I never thought like that that was something that I would really be able to give. Um, I, I had toyed with the idea of psychology because I yeah. really enjoy that. But I also, I didn't want to be a therapist. I didn't really want to be dealing with people's emotions. I wanted to help them move forward. And mm. we can talk about your emotions and feel them and yeah. all that. But I would rather you be going in the direction that you want to go. So I just mm. wanted to be able to provide that for other people. Yeah. I was just talking about this with um, my assistant Jamal behind mm -hmm. a camera here. And we were talking about, right before you walked in, we were talking about how in reality, though, I think it's a it's a combination of the two. I don't really think you can help people even on a life coaching level mm -hmm. without getting on some level into their emotional stuckness pattern, so to speak. Yeah, and that's definitely. what Jamal was talking about, too. Mm -hmm. And so as you like evolve into this journey, I think that thing that you on some level you want to avoid probably won't be avoidable. Mm -hmm. That sort of deep, like, you know, we call it in psychology, like transference, people project their, mm -hmm. um, you know, their thoughts and biases and emotions onto you. At, even as a life coach, whether you're a therapist or a life coach, mm -hmm. they're going to be doing that. And then transference issues, you know, can get really sticky and tricky mm -hmm. because it's not just their projections, it's also your projections, mm -hmm. right? And so the more you do as like, you know, like personal growth on your own journey, like the more you meditate and the more you live with courage and the more you look inward and deal with these sort of conflicts in yourself, mm -hmm. they, the more clarity you'll have as you guide and coach others. Mm -hmm. And so I think you're going to find that out as you go here that um, because life coaching is this sort of new thing you know tony robbins was sort of the inventor of it and he's like one of the you know probably the best speakers of personal growth communicators of personal growth mm -hmm. on the planet but one of the things that he regrets that he seems to regret because he's shared it many times is that he's created this army of so-called life coaches and you know not all of them are sort of uh sophisticated enough to understand yeah you know so there's this challenge from my perspective of like getting people moving, which is more life coaching mm -hmm. than psychology therapy, which mm -hmm. would be more like deeper and introspective into how these patterns originated. Mm -hmm. And my perspective or my bias is to do a combination of both, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm not sure you can escape the underneath as you go, like meaning yeah. six months in, right? In the beginning, are we good? So in the beginning, yeah, you want to get people moving, and but then you then you start to see patterns of the mm -hmm. why some people don't particularly move. The good news for you is all this background with depression is really going to help you because you're going to understand things that maybe some life coaches won't understand if they've never been through it. Yeah, because that does hang a lot of people up. Mm -hmm. If you remember back in the times when you were depressed, right? Even if you wanted to sort of build a business or grow, yeah, you were kind of bogged down by something very mm -hmm. heavy and different, right? Yeah. What are your thoughts based on what I just shared right now? I kind of went on for a bit. Well, <laughs> I do think that it's very important to have a psychology background um, or some, some way that it needs to be incorporated into life coaching um, because it is inescapable. You do, you, know, right. just, you have to know about the mind and the depths of the mind and how that interplays with emotions and then um, like you want to get the whole person moving so you can't really leave out any parts. Yeah, totally. Um, so I do think nutrition is also important in understanding sure. how that, how that can impact, um, your emotions and your mind. Um, because I did struggle a lot with apathy and just not being able to like, right. move. I would be like bedridden for hours and days. Wow. That's pretty so. intense. So again, that, that, that personal experience with something, deep like depression something difficult and deep like depression is going to be invaluable because i think you're going to find that a lot of people they either go through some version of that or you know i mean they don't understand why it is they can't really move yeah right mm -hmm. um it sounds like you've stayed clear though of meds right it feels like you're yeah, a I holistic think. type right yeah i just i never i have i still haven't been diagnosed mm. um but i have been seeing a therapist and mm. So we'll see about that. But um, between depression and anxiety, because it, yeah. 
it does run in my family and just like swinging in between. Oh my God, right. what am I going to do about the future? Right. Oh my gosh, I can't move. <laughs> like, yeah, anxiety can get pretty overwhelming as well. Um, so again, this is wonderful, you know, background experience for your future journey because you understand it better than most, right? Because you've been through it. Um, anxiety can be pretty tough because it's so debilitating. Mm -hmm. And some people are more, you know, it's a continuum. Some people are more prone to these things than others, right? Mm -hmm. Genetically or a combination of how they're wired, their genetics and their conditioning. Mm -hmm. As you know, right, some people just, they just had a bigger dose, mm -hmm. like of what, you know, what we playfully say is neuroticism, right? Mm -hmm. Some people are just more anxious, tense, and insecure by the way they were wired mm -hmm. than, you know, that early childhood experience than other people. And then in some ways it's a harder journey, but in other ways you're more potentially empathic and understanding and you have a greater depth because you've been through so much more than somebody that's never been in that either despair or apathy mm -hmm. or hopelessness or just that feeling that nothing's really working mm -hmm. because a huge percentage of our population deals with this and most people don't really understand it. Yeah. So this is kind of awesome <laughs> in a way. <laughs> Not easy, but yeah. it'll set you up well. Um, Christina Town is absolutely wonderful. You know, we've sort of went through this sort of process of your background as an athlete, as a soccer player, and we mm -hmm. sort of learned that you know, you've had some struggles on the way, not just with injuries, but with depression and anxiety and things around the mental health arena. Mm -hmm. But she's in the process mm -hmm. of doing the holistic life coaching. And so as a result of that, I think that um, you're going to be in really good shape going forward Thank here. Thank you. Absolute oh. pleasure. Great to see you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching See It and Feel It with me, Dr. Brett. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, subscribe, or share it with a friend.